On this episode of Game Check, there's big news on the virtual pinball front from At Games, and I ask if any of you guys are going to get the legacy cabinets from Arcade One Up. All that and more coming up next. Hey everybody, JDV here for EvilGeniusEntertainment.com. Thank you very much for stopping by the Game Shack. Um, well, we're, we're cruising through April. I'm going to air this on Friday, uh, the 9th of April, 2021. Uh, speaking of that, I hopefully will be on your average gamers show tonight at around 11 p.m. So if you guys could uh, go over there and check that out, he's got a great channel. Well, the big news for this week has got to be the fact that uh, Ad Game sent out a mass email to everyone who has pre-orders in on Wave 4 Pinball, including yours truly and telling them to get ready to lose a little bit of money because the games are going to be shipped out about a month earlier than anticipated. Now that is just absolutely great news for everybody involved, including the people who now have been waiting for these pinball games. Well, not for that long, but have been interested in virtual pinball for some time and weren't able to get uh, anything going. So it's great news for fans of VPN. And I think it's great news for um, ad games who, like a lot of companies, were suffered a lot on the supply side of this particular product. And so to be able to deliver all of Waves 1 through 3 finally, and then get just about everybody, if not everybody, um, who ordered on Wave 4, get them their unit within a couple of months, that is really, really good news and shows that you know they might be starting to work out the kinks there on their um, flagship models. So really good job you guys over at Ad Games and everybody who has a pre-order in, you know, get hopefully we'll have those games in soon. As soon as I have done my review, I will get it up as soon as I can. Uh, speaking of pinball, arcade one-ups, a long anticipated, long awaited attack from Mars is still missing in action down here in the States. Of course, it's been for sale for some time now in uh, Canada and you can get the game here in the States if you order it through Canada, but you're going to pay a premium. And that's really the only way that anybody's been able to play this game is doing that route. There is a shipment in a California being distributed to their warehouses. We just have no way of knowing how many people pre-ordered the game to start with. So we just don't know how many people in this first wave are going to get them. But it doesn't look like there's going to be any, at least a lot more of these games anytime soon. So the desire for this game probably does outweigh the supply and probably will for some time. So the real question is, in my mind, isn't so much, you know, when are these units going to be delivered? They're going to be delivered here pretty soon. The real question, I think, is, is Arcade 1UP going to stick with a design for these three V-Pins or address some of the now pretty much universal complaints about this game. I don't think that we're gonna see any better video quality. I'd be very surprised if the Jaggies go away, but hopefully they're gonna give consumers at least some more controllability over the video, at least being able to allow contrast and things like that, being able to adjust the size of the DMD backboard, that would be nice. Also, if these upgrades do come down the line for Wave 2, will they be able to transfer over to Wave 1 via the USB? I guess time will tell. Uh, a little news on the Dark Tower Returns front. I know I don't know how many of you guys are interested in that, but it's a retro electronic game. Uh, that I'm at least very interested in. Anyway, uh, the makers of Dark Tower Returns sent out an email a couple of day days ago asking them what kind of cell phone they use because the cell phone is a big part of that game. I guess it tells you what the tower is doing. So I put in my cell phone. <laughs> and so hopefully that will help iron out all the kinks that I think they're anticipating for the various cell phone devices. So anyway, Dark Tower Returns is one step closer to happening. And a lot of IR arcade owners have downloaded Space Ace, it looks like. Uh, P-Dubs, a couple other people have some very nice reviews of the game up. I used to love that game in the arcade and is a very compelling reason to buy an IR arcade, in my opinion. And from what I can tell, the game looks absolutely spectacular. It looks it just looks flawless and all the little other things like leaderboards and little cheat help things and that you can you know change the difficulty level of the game that is awesome so hey space ace lives good job ir r 
Okay, so I guess that wraps up the news this week. The big news really was the uh, announcement from At Games about their pinball game. All right, so now we're going to get to the uh, question of this episode, which is, are you going to buy the legacy cabinets from Arcade? One up, do you have any interest in them? When these cabinets were first announced, I, like a lot of people, were very, very interested in them. Um, I think the first cabinet that I saw that I had the most interest in was the Tempest cabinet that has a bunch of kind of older style vector graphic games like, you know, obviously Tempest, Asteroids, uh, things like that. But because I bought an ALU and it has a lot of those games on there, I don't feel the same need to have the game, particularly because this, you know, they, uh, the ALU has a trackball and spinners. So that kind of remove some of the justification for me to buy in that game. The second game on that list that I thought for sure I was going to really take a hard run at is Street Fighter because I love Street Fighter. But then I find out A about the, the ridges on the game and the fact that so many of the games on this cabinet are Street Fighter games. I can see having three of the same kind of you know game being on there the way that Mortal Kombat has. I think there's five or six. That, that, that does not make sense to me. And I'm not necessarily a fan of all the Street Fighter games. In fact, I'm not. And so I wish that there was more variety on there. And I am worried about the edges. And that's because these Mortal Kombat games, which is now the next pick on my list that I thought I was going to get, those raised edges are starting to wear off already, and some people have reported that. And I think that is a, a legitimate concern about that cabinet, not just the discomfort, but the fact that, hey, did you, did you not really know that there's gonna be a wrist on this not T-molding molding? <laughs> I mean, it, it, it could be a real issue. And P-Dubs has pointed out to, in his uh, review, check his review out, that the, the machines are actually an inch or two shorter than your normal stamp out arcade one-up game and that that no one had reported that up until then at least i hadn't seen that and that came as a, like a wow it's actually shorter he pointed out that as a 511 guy he could not see the screen when he was in the position to play the game well so what if you're 59 510 or, or taller you're not going to be able to see the screen uh, that that is absolutely weird to me and again shows that they built this cabinet because it looked cool they didn't build the cabinet to, you know to actually be playable so now i'm kind of geez i really wanted that cab but uh, man i mean that's that's weird I'm not, so now i'm to the the cab that i had the least amount of interest in when it was announced in part because oh boy i'm really gonna buy another pac-man arcade one-up game but the reality is, is of of all the four the one that i still have the interest in the one that i probably will buy at some point is the uh, Bandai Pac-Man Legacy Cabinet. I do love that cab, but if I can sell that cab, you know, for, you know, 250, I can get into a Pac-Man cab, which they're, they seem to be available. For one thing, you can actually order it. Not only do you get, you know, Pac-Man and Pac-Land, you get Galaga, you get Galaxian, you get Dig Dug. That's a pretty stout set of games, particularly if you can only have one or two branded cabinets and you're just starting out your arcade. That is going to be a very, very compelling thing to have. Or if you're someone like me and you're trying, always trying to condense two into one, boy, that, that's a very attractive package because, I mean, I love Dig Dug. I love that game but I don't have it on any kind of dedicated cab. It would be super nice if it was on my Pac-Man game, and now I can get it on there. But I can also get a little riser and a lit marquee too. So of the, all these four games, this is the one I still have the most interest in, and I think maybe the one that gives you the most bang for buck. Mortal Kombat, maybe. All right, well, what do you guys think? Are you at all interested in these uh, legacy cabs? It seems like there's a big interest for them. They're going for, you know, seven, $800 on eBay right now. 
Of course, that always happens. Does anybody ever buy that? I mean, I'm assuming you guys have interest in at least some of these caps, uh, but do these reports of them being shorter, and in particularly in the Mortal Kombat case where you have that forward lit marquee and the raised edges and it's shorter, is it is that just kind of like a, is that too much negative design choices? Should we try to punish Arcade One Up for not thinking these things through? Or is, hey, the price is good and, you know, these are not going to be perfect and, you know, this is essentially wave one of this product and they will iron out some of these problems down the line. Are you going to wait for wave two of these products? Okay, so that wraps it up for this episode. Please join me tonight, Friday, April 9th at 11 Eastern Standard Time on your Average Gamers channel here on YouTube. I'm going to be his guest. At least I'm going to try to be internet willing. We did a little test today and it was, you know, it was fine. It's going to be great. <laughs> so join me over at his channel. He's got a great channel and he's, I'm going to be a guest on his show tonight. Catch it live and or on replay. I should hopefully have a review of my OutRun cabinet along with five mods that you can do all of them for less than $100. I should hopefully have that video up soon as well. Thanks for watching guys. Love each other and until next time I will see you guys in the Game Shack. Mwah! Mortal Kombat! <coughs> oh man, I got a splinter in my arm. Whew. I was gonna beat Johnny Cage, but you know, splinter. Okay. Be sure to visit EvilGeniusEntertainment.com for exclusive content, swag, casting call news, and much, much more.